Hello, we're back. So hopefully you had enough time to work on those exercises. If not, well, you have a little bit more. You can think about it during this next talk. Uh, we'll be going over the exercises in about half an hour. So next up, we have a talk called Laptop Salumi, an overview of CSC resources. And we have Yuha Leto here from CSC, who works on the computing environment team, which is sort of between the cluster admins and the other user support. But from what I understand, the idea is making more easy to use and sort of better ways for people to use the clusters. But I think the main the point of the talk is to know that, OK, we've been talking about things here. If you need even more resources than there are at Triton with at Alto, then you have the option of CSC. And it's really pretty similar. So with that said, you have, um, if you can share your screen, I'll flip it to that. OK, thank you. So here you go. Great. Yes, here we are. OK, so yeah, I guess I don't need to be here, so I'll hide myself. And if you have any questions, let me know. Bye. OK, thanks. All right, so uh, from laptop to Lumi. So uh, what kind of services CSC provides? And uh, and yeah, I think that's, that's a good title for this thing. My name is Juha Lento. Not Jussi Enkovar. I inherited this talk just uh, one day ago, so I will use last year's slides. But we will have a look at the, let's say, actual services instead of just just, just the slides. So I think that all slides are just fine. Uh, what we are going to talk is what is CSC. Uh, a little bit about CSC's computing services, data services, other services, and how can you access CSC services. Uh, CSC IT Center for Science has been around maybe 50 years, maybe not that long, something like that. And uh, it has grown, and it's growing very fast nowadays, so we are not only managing uh, big clusters, but doing lots of stuff for the Ministry of Education and, and culture and also to the universities and the polytechnics and and also nowadays also research institute researchers have access to CSC's resources exactly the same way as university researchers and students. So uh, I would say that the kind of the first thing to mention here is that you all have right to use uh, CSC services and most of them are already paid. So feel free to use them. And then the second kind of question, can I use the services? Yes, you can, but should I? And this is a more difficult question. So the obvious and easy answer how to how to know about this is to ask your supervisor or let's say the, your uh, master's thesis supervisor or or PhD student uh, PhD thesis supervisor should I use CSC services and they will actually probably tell if you should. So usually the if if your research group is already using CSC services, that's uh, then you can like work together with your colleagues. And this is, well, let's say the easiest way to know how to how to work with CSC's resources. Uh, and that's, uh, yeah, that's how to get access. But in, in short, if like in traditional sense, if your calculations are starting to take a long time, but they can be run in parallel. Then you can use a cluster, either your local cluster, or if your 
research group has been using CSC for a long time, they already know how to use that resource and you can kind of start using that easily. Uh, if your calculation needs lots of memory, also in here, if your calculation needs lots of memory, you probably want it to run in parallel also. Uh, it needs lots of storage space. Yeah, that's available at least definitely more than on your laptop. And then we have lots of scientific applications that are already installed into the machine, which is nice. So to use, I, I would say that the most CSCs research users and researchers using CSC services are not running large parallel calculation. I would say the large number of our users are actually using CSC services as they would use it's a large workstation instead of a cluster of workstations. And also for kind of uh, within research group, kind of getting the synergy of using the kind of same machine or, or similar things that you are doing in, in your research group. Uh, yeah, and then you can also share data using Alas. So Alas is, uh, is an object storage, but you can publish whatever files you have in the internet or share them between different projects. And here I, with projects, I mean CSCs, computing projects. Yeah. And you can also build like interfaces that use Alas. So Alas is, is very raw storage. So if you want even to let's say list files in a bucket bucket is a folder or directory basically in object storage even that you need to kind of code yourself but that's pretty easy okay but anyways you can kind of use it as a dropbox or or publishing service how csc supercomputers differ from university cluster uh in all the york lucky because your local cluster is very similar to uh, Puhti and Mahti. Puhti and Mahti are just larger and uh, yeah but also they have more users so kind of you don't necessarily get more research resources for yourself it depends on on the time of the year and day how much how much crowd there is and how much other calculations are running in the machine. Uh, command line access is very similar. So you log into login mode uh, you, with SSH, and then you type stuff in the terminal. And this works very similar in all the clusters. So basically, you are, you are logging into login mode, which is a Linux machine, and then using the batch queue system, you can uh, spread your calculation into compute logs. But you have already discussed that and, and that you are familiar with that stuff. Okay, uh, we have a new service. So this slide is a year old. So actually now the service is established and and it's, uh, I think it's very popular. This, uh, the, you're accessing CSC services through web browser. So Puhti has a web interface and Mahti will also have web interface very soon. And I hope Lumi will also have web interface very soon. And this web interface is really convenient for exactly this kind of works workloads where you use, let's say one node in the machine as a large workstation. That, that kind of uses is really, easy and nice nice using web browser then if you need to run large parallel calculation then probably using uh, just a command line is, is still better yeah and there's lots of software already installed and you use module system to pick which versions of the software you want to use the same as in your local cluster and use batch queue system to submit the jobs to compute nodes. 
uh, CSS resources consume billing units. So we try to, basically this is for uh, giving like a fair share of the resources to everybody. So you get billing units based on the kind of size of your project, how many researches, researchers there is and what kind of research you do and, and uh, how many publications you already have and do you have academy money and whatnot. But I wouldn't worry too much about billing units. Like usually the problem is not the resources, maybe the disk space if you go crazy. But uh, like computing resources are usually like there's plenty of that if you are if you know how to use it efficiently, it's a uh, it's a uh, there's plenty of computing resources I would say. So you don't need to worry billing units that much. Also, you the kind of getting billing units or getting more of them to your project is very easy, and I will talk about that a little bit later. Uh, computing services, so which machine should you use, Puhti or Mahti? So Puhti is our kind of general machine, and this is used a lot like, like a large workstation, but you can also run pretty large parallel calculations in there. I would say that if your parallel calculation starts to be more than, let's say, 128 MPI tasks, then you probably should already change to Mahti because in Mahti there's less queue and also it's a little bit more responsive machine nowadays and there's more disk. So if your your uh, yeah MPI jobs are more than 128 cores or otherwise you can utilize that number of CPU cores in one calculation at one time, then Mahti is probably better machine. Yeah, and this is more about the same stuff. And then the web interface, I will show, there's a slide about this, but I think it's better if I just show how it works, like live, let's hope it works. And then uh, CSC has lots of other services in addition to, to computing clusters. So we also have cloud computing services People are sometimes a little bit confused when to use cloud computing services. I would say that you use cloud computing services when you want to run a server. So server is a program running in a computer that is listening to requests from outside instead of kind of running calculation within the machine. And, and in supercomputers, you, you, don't, you can't run servers in that sense. So you can't have a file server, for example. You can't start your own file, file server in, in Puhti, which is available to e everybody in the internet, for example. But in cloud services, you can. Also, if you want to just share some files and not, not provide anything more complicated service, you can just use Allas, and then you don't need to have the kind of active, active uh, cloud instance of virtual machine running. But for kind of special needs, you have cloud services also. So, and for example, you might need it for sensitive data. If you handle for some, some uh, like patient data or something like that. And it, this has legislation and strict rules that you can put it into a machine, which is this and that. <laughs> Lots of details, I don't remember them all. You know, if your data is sensitive data, you know about that stuff. Yeah. And then we have a rather new machine. And so this is Pan European supercomputer. So this is not only for Finnish users. It has, I don't know, maybe around 10 mm -hmm. different countries on it, a part of it. And uh, it's an interesting resource because there's a kind of support is, is kind of divided. There's an international support team, and then there's admins, which are from CSC, and then there are 
of course, we other CSC specialists like the regular national stuff also help with with Lumi things. So it's interesting a little bit in that sense. But it's a nice machine. Even the kind of small CPU well, partition of of Lumi is about the same size as Mahdi. So you can do already a lot lot there. But the kind of main computing power is in the GPUs in Lumi. So you know, this is common nowadays. If you want to get like lots of flops, then you stack GPUs into a machine. Yeah. And you can also get access to Lumi. And the process is maybe slightly more complicated, but not really. So it's pretty easy. Uh, I already mentioned Allas many times. So I think this is really convenient if you want to share data. And also Allas is the place where you keep a project lifetime data. So data that is that you should have during the computing project. So maybe two or three years or until you graduate or something like that. You should put that kind of data into Allas. And then the scratch space on Puhti and Mahti is meant for the du duration of the, let's say, calculation uh, campaign or whatever. So let's say during one, the writing of one article, let's, let's put it this way. And then there's fair services, fair data services. And well, I must confess that I'm not that familiar with that side, but uh, let's say the discoverability and also the life cycle management of data. That is something that everybody should think carefully when you start a project. So how long do I need to keep the data and to whom I need to share it with? Things like that. And then this fair data services helps if you if you need something more complex than just making it public to the whole world or something like that. Other services training definitely. I, I think we all application specialists hope that we, we had more time to give courses and I have always enjoyed the courses. Uh, they are nice and yet they are usually uh, in some specific area of, of science like chemistry or something like that. And then we have expert services. So we have uh, maybe let's say 30 persons who are former researchers. So we know about the research field and we support the software and, and stuff related to that. So if you're lucky, the stuff that you research is, is already kind of covered. And if you are not lucky, then we try to see if, if we can find somebody who knows something about it. So he can or she can help you with the, with the scientific stuff also a little bit. Mostly we, we work with a computer, running computing efficiently. Let's, let's say it this way. And we, of course, help installing software. So sometimes scientific software is not trivial to install. OK. A couple of courses that are definitely worth mentioning is elements of supercomputing. And then using, let's say, this using CSC environment efficiently course is something that you should definitely check. I think it's online nowadays, so you can do it whenever you want. And the lectures are video lectures and, and so. But it gets you familiar with the CSC's environment very nicely. And then CSC summer school in high performance computing. That's a great summer school. It's a lot of work, but it's also a lot of fun. It's in Nuuksio. I think it has been in Nuuksio many years. And it's really nice. I definitely recommend that one. Okay, then I promised to talk about getting access to CSC's supercomputers and services. So you are eligible, and it's actually really easy. As university staff and students, you have Haka, 
authentication so you can just go into my csc maybe i just open it up so it, the front page looks like this and then you log in or register okay and i can use haka And I am already, a, uh, I already have a CSC account. So I'm kind of CSC user. And then when I have a account, I need a project. So accounts don't, uh, you don't get an access to machines yet with an account, but you get access to Puhti and Mahdi uh, through projects. So you need to start a computing project or join some existing computing project and the projects have the resources so you can apply uh, billing units to projects and you can say that i want to use puhti and mahti and allas and whatnot in the project and and then as as a member you can use use the stuff in the in the project and you can manage all kind of things related to your account in this my.csc.fi service there is a question that's relevant right now, which is, can I create a personal project? How many resources can I ask for? Yes, you can. Um, you, well, you actually, for a project, you need to basically be a staff member at the university. So mm -hmm. you need to ask, uh, if you are a student, you need to ask your, ask a permission to join your professors. Uh, or supervisors project. So you need to be a like senior researcher or professor or something like that to, to start the project. Or, but but then being a student is not enough yet. Yeah. Did this answer the question? Yes, thank you. Good, good. So the project owner needs to be some kind of responsible people or person who who is who, who is a staff member at the university or polytechnic or research institute like FMI or VTT or something like that. But other than that, uh, billing units, uh, at least at some point, billing unit is was roughly equivalent to one uh, CPU hour, CPU core hour. And uh, you can get 100,000 CPU or uh, 100,000 billing units like automatically. So that's about the scale that you can get. And then like, let's say big project might be 5 million billing units and then really big project maybe some between like 20 or 30 million billing units, which is roughly equivalent to core CPU hours, but also your disk usage will you, will consume billing units. But don't worry too much about those. So the billing units are kind of, if you are starting to run out of them, you may be doing something silly, like you have left your temporary files on the disk or something like that. Yeah, but anyways, this is the place where you manage your account and projects. And uh, yeah, okay, here it says project manager needs to be an experienced, experienced researcher. Yeah. And then let's not go to questions yet. I'll show a couple of these services live. So I promised to show this Puhti web interface. So this is. If you type in puhti.csc.fi to your browser, you go into this you kind of... the font size a lot larger because of the way it's put into... A you need bigger version. font? Yeah, this is... Yeah. Could be a bit bigger, but it's probably okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm afraid the <laughs> layout will be horrible with the larger... But it's enough just to show roughly what, what it looks like. And then you log into Puhti. Wakey, wakey. Okay. 
Yeah, I was already logged in, but you, you can use your Haka authentication when you have an account and a project. You need to get those first from MyCSC. But when you have those, this is the kind of web interface for, for the Puhti. And let's say that I want to do something in a login. Well, okay, login node shell. So this is where you would go if you SSH mm -hmm. into Puhti.csc.fi. But usually, you might also jump right into compute node. So this is interactive job in a compute node. Let's see, it does start. Obviously, if you're doing live demo, it will be slow. <laughs> like now it's waiting for some metrics. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So instead of go, logging in using SSH and terminal and then starting interactive session or interactive job in a compute node, you can go to this uh, web interface. And these are basically the same parameters that you could give in your uh, sbatch command or script. So you can specify the number of CPU cores, memory, how much local disk you would like to get and stuff like that. And then you can launch it. Okay, so I need to specify. Okay, for some reason I have project CSC training there, which is not right. Let's I'll, I'll get something like this is my. Somebody asked, can you have your own personal project? I do have. I don't know if it's recommended or not, but it's convenient to have one. Okay, now it says that it's uh, it's starting the interactive. So it's now a uh, queuing to start the interactive job. And then I can just connect to the session. So now I'm basically going right into the compute node. Mm -hmm. And this is nice because I can mess up here. So if I want to run heavier calculation, which I don't want to run in the login node, here it's okay. It's only one one of the compute nodes that will get stuck. Of course, also in here you cannot uh, do bad things on the disks because there's just the parallel disk disks are are uh, shared resource. So you need to be careful how you use those. So this is this is the equivalent of the s interactive command that we learned yesterday, I guess. So you have the job allocation yeah. and can type exactly. whatever. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And this was a kind of, uh, yeah, and when you are done, you can just close the tab and then you can delete the job. So you can reconnect to this same session if you want. So that's kind of screen or Emacs type of thing. Yeah. You are familiar with those. Okay. But then there were lots of other things here also. Maybe I have one minute more. So desktop is something which you might want to use if you want to plot some graphs on, from the data that you have in Puhti. We used to have a service called No Machine, which is a, it's a, a remote, desktop, doc, remote desktop service, but this is similar. So you can open a container within the compute node and you can run a regular desktop here. And you can open terminal, which will open in the same compute node. And now if you want to start some graphical stuff, you can start it here. And this is quicker than doing SSH minus X to Puhti and using X11 to transfer graphical mm -hmm. stuff between Puhti and your so I think lots of people are using this one also. Uh, let's close and delete that job. And then uh, the services that are used a lot are, you can start MATLAB, RStudio, uh, 
Visual Studio code, you probably want to run on your, on your local machine and then use this remote plugin for well, uh, VS code to access stuff. Yeah. But Jupyter is, is something uh, there that a lot of people use and yeah. RStudio. So you can just open those. Yeah. So we've got some questions. What do you like to see? Yeah. Okay. I will take over the screen share. Yep. And move. Yes, this is me. Uh, so... I didn't talk about Lumi. Ah. <laughs> oh, should we <laughs> should we go back? Right now, but yeah. I, I talked well, a little bit about Lumi. Briefly, yeah. what is Lumi? So yeah, I, I did talk a little bit about it. So you can search for Lumi supercomputer and it will throw you into the documentation. Ah, also, mm -hmm. I've, I I didn't explicitly mention docs.csc.fi, which is our documentation for all the machines. Mm -hmm. So if you are starting to use CSC's resources, docs.csc.fi is the address that you want to go first. Right. Okay. Good. Okay. Then the questions. Yeah. So the first one was what kind of research projects benefit from the Lumi supercomputer? I would say if you have a large international project or a project with industrial partners, mm -hmm. because lots of Lumi resources are reserved for industrial use. And, and it's really, I, I would say it's really easy to get results, uh, resources from there if you are an industrial user. Okay. Uh, or you are uh, then, collaborating with one. And I then guess that's the, not the case at CSC. So for industrial users, they would be paying for the services. Exactly. But in Lumi, you okay. probably can get to access to resources that are already paid or something like that. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, so yes, are bachelor's and master's theses allowed use cases for CSC Lumi? Was that already answered? Like, is it the case yes, if your you supervisor can, you need, requests yeah, the yeah, yeah, but you kind of project. need to belong to some large approach. You can use Lumi, okay. but you need to belong okay. to some project that has access to Lumi. Yeah. So, so could you make a project, say, I'm requesting project for this student's thesis, or would it need to be phrased as something larger than that? Did you say, like, a, a project for all your students, <laughs> for example? Maybe, or something like that. Uh, we would prefer that projects have a kind of kind of uh, ending time also mm -hmm. so it's easier to keep the let's say in practice it's easier to yeah. delete files from the file system when the project ends then you know okay. that. yeah yeah otherwise as you know disks will fill up no matter how big they are yeah <laughs> we need to <laughs> clean them somehow and yeah. when project ends, that's a good place to remove stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Another question. What would using Lumi make more sense than using Triton, which is Alto's cluster in terms of computation? I guess this was maybe already answered somehow. Yeah. If you, or, you need to use lots of GPUs, especially in parallel, then that would be a good case. Like from the kind of technical mm, perspective. Right. Yeah. Also, also and that's what we recommend. GPUs. Like. Yeah. And I point out that us at Science IT, we've gone through and figured out how to use the how to use Lumi with some of the common machine learning frameworks. So we'd recommend if you aren't sure, come to us, let us know your problem, and we'll help you get set up on Lumi. And then you can run there and have access to far more GPUs than you could have imagined. Yeah, that's a that's a good service because getting started. I would say you always need somebody who has already done that stuff earlier. Otherwise, it's really slow, even with good documentation. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. If you have a colleague or support person for yeah. to help you, then that that's definitely the way to go. Especially for new researchers, ask help. You will save lots of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. I added the link to the using the CSC environment efficiently personal project. Okay, I already asked you that earlier. Yep. 
uh, are projects officially funded projects? Do they need to be approved? Is there anything that's not already answered here? So I guess project doesn't mean like Academy of Finland project. It basically means a request made to CSC for something research related. Yeah, so it, no we matter have, the source of the funding. Yeah, when I'm talking about project, I mean CSC's computing project. Yeah, it's a. Uh, uh, basically, we use projects. If you think about technical side, project members can easily share data between themselves or, or within the group because they all belong to the same Unix group. Mm. And, and also, Allah's access is similar. Everybody in a project has all the rights in the Allah's files that the project has. You know, So it's kind of way of managing groups. We used to have this yeah. thing that that we kind of the first class citizen was was user instead of a group, mm. and then if if you wanted to share your files with another user, that was that was not easy. Okay. Or that, that mm. is, of okay. course there are some drawbacks also in this approach that group is the kind of first class citizen and user is second right. class. Citizen. Yeah. Okay. Billing units. I was just writing down here. So what was the very large project size? Uh, I must say that I might be outdated <laughs> here. You can put 20 million there. Okay, okay. Let's yeah. say this is very large. <laughs> yeah. It could be okay. 50 million nowadays. I um, might be outdated. Right, yeah. But as I said, it, it, it really doesn't... Uh, I don't think... It's it's really difficult to use that much of computing resources. I would say, efficient. <laughs> yeah. It's really really difficult. Like if you spend like a week more thinking, then you can probably do with half of that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How it usually okay. goes. So how to access Lumi? I guess that's answered in these points here. Yeah. yeah. Comment on Lumi versus Amazon Web Services or Azure. Uh, completely different. That's a good one. Yeah, totally different. Uh, so I guess Lumi, well, it's sort of like some fundamental idea where on Lumi, the main set of the main allocation is a job and all of the computing hardware is shared. On AWS or Azure, you would be getting either um, like the core thing would be the like the servers you're requesting or like the certain amount of hardware or the access to some database or something. Yes, some so AVS and Azure are cloud services. So, yeah. And you can use them a little bit like computing services also. Yeah. If you you kind of build your own cluster in Azure or AVS. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can, you can yeah, think yeah. about it like that. Yeah, okay. If but I uh, all that, links kind of, if you take AVS or Azure, you may have to kind of basically build your own HPC machine or whatever if you want right. to run a similar thing. Of course, then yeah. you have it all to yourself. Mm -hmm. This is the yeah. But you're paying for and all of, course, of it, the, even course, when it's not being used. Yeah. Yeah. And these and things are not cheap. Yeah, obviously. Is support for C. Yeah. yeah. And see support it, for CSCs. And, yeah, and and kind of finish a uh, policy of having one big computing center, I think ha has paid really well. So in other Nordic mm. countries and many, in many other countries, the national resources are spread around different, let's say university campuses, like completely spread. Mm. So in, mm -hmm. in Finland, we have one big center and then universities have their own clusters. Yeah. But then the kind of one big center has has a more uh, kind of possibility to, to get just bigger machines than individual university could ever, yeah. Yeah, okay. There's a question, I guess, to me, is there support for using CSC services in the daily garage? Or is it just, I guess you mean the Alto daily garage? So yes, we help you with everything. So even if it was AWS or Azura, we've done projects using all of them. And that doesn't mean we know the answer to everything, but we can get you started. We'll do the best we can and direct you to the other resources if needed. Okay. Mm, there's a last question coming in here. You can see 
project on Lumi, how to start a session on it. Maybe for that, we, well, I guess Yuha can probably answer this by writing later. It's probably some of the links up here, maybe. You just uh, SSH in the Lumi. You need to copy your okay. SSH key, the public part, first into the service. And then, actually, there's a, I think there's a good documentation on that also. Yeah, we can just yeah. find the link if it's not already there. Get started users yeah. in Finland. I think it's there already in the in the first link. How to okay. get access? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, with that said, I guess we are pretty much done, and we should probably get moving on. Um. Yeah. So, thanks, Yuha. Hopefully, this was uh, insightful to other people here to know that. Like what we're teaching in this course really applies to far more than just what we're doing. We're teaching you the standard stuff, pretty much. Definitely. Like all supercomputers are individuals, so details change. But if you know the kind of basics around how, why, why, why do you have that system and stuff like that, then you are fine. Mm -hmm. Then you can Google or ask for the details. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, once you get accustomed to your local pond, uh, your local area, then it's usually a good idea to, uh, and once once that starts to feel small, there are bigger ponds where you can go and play around. And uh, we yeah. all like like to work together so that we can like, everybody ha has a, their individual needs and their individual needs are, can be supported by multiple different places. So it's not like a competition that one, one is a bigger uh, player, mm -hmm. like like it would take something out of us. That's not how this works. Like the main product that all of these services produce are uh, people who manage to do their PhDs, research, that sort of things. And like, it doesn't matter which site provides the features. It's all about the end goal. Yeah.